You're listening to Sister Stargazers, celestial and terrestrial observations and advice from two real-life sisters. Welcome, fellow stargazers. Your sisters are in the house. Hi, Jude. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm good. It's so good to see you. Thanks for hopping on the call for episode oh my God. 55, if you can believe it. Yes, thank you. This is covering the last week of September. So Sunday, September 25 through Saturday, October 1st, if you can believe it. We are into October. A packed week. I saw the script you sent with all the notes. I don't know where you want to start, but it's a packed week. Yeah, it is packed. I mean, we can start right up at the top. Let's do it. The new moon in Libra. Ooh, At two okay. degrees Libra on the 25th, Sunday the 25th. Mm. Let's be friends. Let's <laughs> <laughs> let's review the past. We're full of ideas, but now is not the time to act. Mercury is still retrograde until the end of the week. Okay. But, you know, that new moon in Libra... At two degrees, is we, we're coming right off of the equinox. Yeah. So the sun moved into Libra. Okay. Now this new moon is moving into Libra on Sunday the 25th. But before it gets there, it opposes Neptune. Okay. It conjuncts Venus and it trines Pluto mm. and it conjuncts Mercury. And then it conjuncts the sun. Wow. And then it opposes Jupiter. So you can see the chart for this is just like, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of personal planets, Venus and yep. Mercury and the sun and the moon yep. that are in play with the outer planets like Pluto yep. and Neptune and Jupiter. So right. this sets up a dynamic where there's a big sense of momentum, a yep. big sense of personal shift. Mm. And some folks might be feeling it, you know, or might have been feeling it like a week or so ahead because everything is kind of lining up. Okay. And certainly folks are going to be feeling it on the equinox itself because some of these larger aspects are reverberating. The sun is is setting it up. Yeah. So yeah. when the moon moves through, the sun is already kind of setting up this wide opposition to Jupiter, which perfects on Monday. Okay. But it's just packed, and I, I don't know how, how else to say this, but, you know, without, like, deep, you know, going into each one of the aspects, right? expect, you know, some real change in your attitude, in your life, maybe mm. communication from people in your past, so you can mm. get a benchmark on how far you've come, you know? Like, Ooh, sometimes great. that happens. You know, you see somebody from, you know, a couple of years ago, and you're like, Wow, yes. how did I have conversations with that person? You know, like you mm, feel mm. like you feel the distance, but you feel mm. you feel like you go back into the person you used to be in order to connect yes. with them. Yes. That can really give you a sense of how far you've grown. So there's a lot of growth yeah. evident in this new moon in Libra. And I wanted to share the Sabian symbol. Oh, yes. It's Dane so, Rudyard. Yes. Mr. Rudyard is such an awesome guy. <sighs> yes, here it is. It's, it's rounded up to three degrees Libra. The symbol for this particular degree is the dawn of a new day reveals mm. everything changed. Yeah. So imagine, you know, waking up to something completely new and that can be a shift in mind because Libra right. is an air sign Ooh. it doesn't have to be like you wake up in another world but you actually wake up with a sense and I don't mean like physically wake up although right. that could happen like you could wake up from a sleep and you're like oh I feel like I'm in a new a new world and you might be because your mind is changed nice and that's the potential of this new moon that you can see where you've been you can see where you're going that mm. you know just in terms of a little glimmer because these outer planets are lining up with the sun and the moon nice Nice. Plus Venus and Mercury. I'll leave that there because we could go into a full episode on that alone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll post, what I'll do is I'll post more stuff in Facebook about it because it's just, I could take it apart aspect by aspect and, you know, that might be helpful. So Monday, September 26th, Venus trines Pluto. Okay. This is a real deep dive. Venus is at the end of Virgo. Okay. She's going to be shifting into Libra 
on Thursday. Right now, she's at the end of Virgo. That's an Earth sign. She's making a trine out to Pluto at the end of Capricorn and Earth sign. So this is a point where really you're grounding. You're grounding like your sense of aesthetic, like what you think about what you like. Mm. You're really like sorting it out. You've been sorting it out during the whole time that Venus has been in Virgo. And now you're like, now there might be real choices that you're making, you know, like I'm really pulled towards this. Yeah. You don't have to know why, but it's an instinct. And that's what Venus trine Pluto. Pluto is all about instinct. Venus is all about beauty. You're pulled towards this aesthetic, this instinctual aesthetic, because it's coming right on the heels of this new moon. It's going to open up some options. Okay. And you want to follow that. Yep. Yep. So you want to follow your heart here. Mercury is still retrograde. It conjuncts Venus. Okay. So it's telling you, you know, it's telling your inner Venus to follow your heart. And you might even actually be able to describe mm. because mm-hmm. Mercury is retrograde. You might be able to find things from your past that led you to this point, you know, like the breadcrumbs, the memories, the pieces that, oh, I used to like that when I was a kid or, oh, that person... I used to remember, you know, yes. I used to play that or or do that with that person. I really enjoyed that. Now is the time to go towards those things that make you happy instinctively. Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah, that's interesting because the Queen of Cups came up, which I feel like is like Venus looking for the heart's desire. Queen of the heart's desire. That's perfect. Yeah. Awesome. We can go into that more, Sarah, if you'd like. I don't have anything else to say other than it's this queen sitting on a throne holding this samovar-type cup, and it's kind of the rivers flowing at her feet. It's kind of like if if you want it, go for it. You've got everything you need. You're the queen of your desire. Yes, and she's gazing into that cup, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, the cup is all of the unconscious. It's all of the, could be Neptunian dreams. It could be the Pluto instincts. All of that is in there. Nice. Yeah, that's a beautiful complimentary card to have pulled. <laughs> She even has her little cherubs up on her throne. There's these two little angelic cherubs kind of over, around her, like like Venus yes. has with her, her cupids. Oh, that's so awesome. All right. Yeah. Great. Love that. So thank you for sharing that. That's perfect. Awesome. So retrograde Mercury is conjunct Venus. So again, there's the opportunity for harmonious interaction. Yeah. Mercury and Venus in Virgo conjunct might be a whole sorting out process. Yeah. Like what you like, what you don't like, why you why would you keep something? Why would you throw something away? I mean <laughs> <laughs> it's clarity. Yes. It's clarity around your appreciation of beauty. Wow. Or your appreciation of what something is worth to you. What you value. You know, what you value, exactly. And that's been happening on the big scale with Uranus and Taurus right. over the last several years. Yes. And now conjunct the North Node, it's really, it's been pulling us toward what we value, what we care about, also making some serious you know, rumbles in the farming community right. and, and how we use our our soil, you know. Yes. I don't know if anyone's um, seen Sanguru, who's going on a, he's going on a, a motorcycle journey through India to save the soil. Wow. He's, he's got a whole lecture series on YouTube. Anyway, I could go off on him, but <laughs> he's like, he's amazing, Sanguru. He's just, you know, in the big picture. We'll put a link. Save the soil. So I'm seeing that Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday and Wednesday are like big, big shifting days okay. because we've got these personal planets making aspects to these big outer planets. Yep. So Monday, Venus trying Pluto. Just talked about that. Mercury to conjunct Venus. We just talked about that. The sun, your identity opposing Jupiter. Mm. There is a sense of optimism, confidence. You can, though, go overboard. Okay. So temper, temper everything. Yep. Of course, the sun is in Libra. That will help to temper everything. Yes. Okay. The moon is still in Libra and it makes a quincunx to Uranus. Mm. That can kind of set you off balance a little bit. The moon is also trying Mars, which gives you this incredible boost of energy. And it's also trying Saturn. So a lot of momentum around ideas, planning, making lists, making a, you know, almost like scoping it out, making a business plan, dedicating your time, 
you know, providing a sense of discipline. Yep, structure. Yeah, those are all up on Monday, Tuesday, the 26th and 27th. Okay. As we move into Tuesday, Mercury, our personal planet, Mercury in retrograde, trines Pluto. Mm. So again, another opportunity for going deep in terms of, it's an Earth trine. So Virgo, particulars, Mm. Pluto and Capricorn, structure, but decomposing, you know, like rearranging yep. the composition or the structure of things, yep. having really in-depth conversation, having a real power behind what you say. Nice. So there's a persuasive quality to what you say. Nice. There's talk of change. There's real access to psychological not so much problems, but complexes and issues. Okay. And there's also a sense of exposure that you could open something that mm. you might be able to manage or or open something or look at something you haven't been able to approach before. That's Mercury trying Pluto. Nice. Okay, so the moon Excellent. is going out of Libra. <laughs> it's had okay. a real busy couple of days and it's moving into Scorpio, which is ruled mm. by Pluto. You know, you still have that sense of a deep dive, but the aspects are not as critical. So the moon okay. takes a break. However, on Wednesday the 28th, <laughs> we have that Mars trine Saturn in an exact trine. So that was coming okay. up on Monday with a moon trine yep. Mars, moon trine Saturn. It's activated again for real. What is the word I'm trying to go for? Is the, the exact <laughs> degree of Mars <laughs> trying trying Saturn. So you have okay. those couple of days. You have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday where this is activated. So there will yep. be, you know, kind of the sense of charge, you know, like move, yeah. you know, like move forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mars aspects usually last about a week. So that will be in okay. play coming into this fall season. It's yep. active in the equinox chart and it really takes yep. on you know, full effect on the 28th and then three or four days on the other side of the 28th. There's just this momentum from the equinox on that's the vibe is picked up by the new moon and just like a wave is just carried over into, into this week. Awesome. By Thursday, Venus enters Libra, her home sign. So she's like fanning herself, you know, like this has been... (laughs) Just on a track, you know, like Venus in Virgo is just wanting to get stuff done. And that's not typically, Venus likes to luxuriate, you know. Yes. Give me the couch and the fan. Exactly. And the grapes and the pomegranates. Exactly. All of that stuff. And a fuzzy critter to to pet and all of that. (laughs) And, you know, that's her. That's her in in Libra. And she's just like, ah, you know. And she loves talking about ideas in Libra. Mm. And the more beautiful, the better. So there may be a strong need for discussion of relationship or or enjoying harmonious aspects with relationships. It's a peaceful time with Venus and Libra. and, And it's very creative. It's a very creative time for relationships. So Friday is a calm day. There's not nothing <laughs> happening of merit <laughs> ah, on Friday. Great. On Saturday, October 1st, mm-hmm. Venus opposes Jupiter. So okay. Venus is in Libra, early Libra, and Venus is now close to where the sun and the moon were when they made their conjunction. So Venus is at three degrees Libra. So as Venus moves into this spot where the sun and the moon were, there might be a reverberation of what happened the week before or five or six days before. So Venus comes through and opposes Jupiter, just like the sun and the moon were opposing Jupiter during the new moon. And Venus was in a wide opposition. But now it's an exact degree to degree opposition. Okay. So Venus opposite Jupiter is saying there's lots of grace and there's lots of room for refinement. Mm. And there's this natural attraction that is like kind of in the air for everyone. Yeah. So be aware of tendencies toward vanity or idleness because Venus just loves this luxuriating moment. 
Yeah. So Jupiter is the higher octave of Venus, which means ah. that it takes on a more refined quality of okay. the many generous, graceful, harmonious interactions that Venus provides. Jupiter just takes that on with like <laughs> gusto. And, mm. and so there's this tendency to exaggerate or, yeah. you know, volumize any of yes. the qualities of Venus, which can be both to the positive and to the negative. Right. So with this opposition of Venus to Jupiter, there's a restlessness, there's yep. a love of adventure. There's also the dynamic because Venus is in Libra and Jupiter's in Aries. There's this dynamic of me. Yes. In Jupiter in Aries and we Mm. Venus in Libra. So there's that aspect going on as a polarity in Mm. dynamics. Okay. Um, So watch for that. Okay. But it's also, you know, it's going to facilitate a talent or an appreciation for literature, the arts. It's also going to help boost work in the law or working any work that is done with the public. Hmm. So that's all to the good. Fantastic. There's one more aspect. Okay. The moon is in Sagittarius. So... Even though Venus is opposing Jupiter and there's this urge to, you know, kind of be distracted and find your heart's desire, the moon in Sagittarius is sextile Saturn, which is saying, let's go to the party, but go to the party for business reasons Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. then leave early. (laughs) So. So Sagittarius, you know, Moon in Sagittarius is like, yeah, let's go out and party with Venus opposing Jupiter. It's like, yeah, let's go out and have some fun. But with that sextile to Saturn, the Moon sextile to Saturn, you want to make that very (laughs) deliberate. You want to make it, you know, a structured, you know, if you go out, you go out for a reason. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a discipline. (laughs) And then you get your work, you get your business done and you leave. Thank you, Saturn. Okay. Yeah. All right. Woo. I feel energized by that week because I know for myself, <laughs> personally, there's a lot of tasks that are going to involve a lot of back and forth and sharing of ideas. So I think it could be a powerful, powerful week. I thank you for your insight to it. Listeners, don't forget you can email us at Connected Sister Stargazers. You can join us Monday night, Eastern Time, 7 p.m. at WMPG.org, 90.9 FM for our 30 minute live call-in astrology show so send us your emails give us a phone call take it easy out there jude any last comments otherwise we should leave it there you are all awesome and you're gonna have a good time <laughs> for this new moon <laughs> happy new moon all right thanks, happy new jude. moon yeah have fun everybody bye for now thanks for listening to sister stargazers let us know what worked for you this week find us on facebook and post a comment at sister stargazers 